Hi, this is Reed Bailey, and I'm here to present to you information on types of scales in the context of statistics and statistical hypothesis testing in a series on intuitive statistics. Now, in this series, we're really aimed at getting you to know when to use a certain statistical test. In terms of the mathematics behind statistics, we've expected you've already had that in a traditional statistics class, or can find out about it if you want to on uh, an online handbook or online textbook or other statistics textbook. After this presentation, we want you to know the four different types of scales, ratio, interval, ordinal, categorical, and how the type of scale of your dependent or independent variable impacts the kind of statistical test or statistical model that you're going to create. Now, if you recall from our video on independent and dependent variables, we were working with data from a 5K running race. And here we see this data again. For each of the runners, here we have seven runners, but imagine you have many, many more. Uh, we know the time of finish, their place of finish, their place in their age group, uh, their actual age, uh, their age group and their gender, and their type of shoe they were wearing. Now we learned from the independent and dependent variable video that the likely dependent variables are time of finish, place of finish, or a place in your age group. And age group, by the way, includes your age and your gender in terms of forming groups. Uh, and likely independent variables would be age or age group, your gender, and the type of shoe. Now clearly you can collect a lot more information from, a, information from a 5K race. This is just a sample set of data that we can work with for this video. So let's start by looking at what are some differences that you notice about the different columns of data. Look around from time to place to gender, age, age group, shoe, type, and we see things like gender and shoe type, and we're thinking, well, in this case, it's really just kind of like types, types of shoes, types of gender, or categories of gender, compared to something like time, where we know exactly how long it took someone to finish. We know that if it took someone 30 minutes to finish, it took them twice as long than if it took them 15 minutes to finish. Um, we know that if it took them uh, 21 minutes, it took them a minute longer than 20 minutes, so we know relative distances of finishing. Compare that to place. Well, finishing place, we know that, for instance, second place is one place behind first place. That actually turns out to just be one second behind. Third place is also one place behind second place, but in that case, it's over a minute behind. And so when we're looking at place of finish, we know the order in which they are finishing, but we really don't know the relative distance between the different finishers in the race. We could carry that on through to some of the other categories, such as age and age group, where on age, we know the relative age difference between two different individuals. When you start bending things into age groups, it just really kind of becomes youngest, younger, young, <laughs> older groupings, very similar to place of finish in the sense that you know the order, but you don't necessarily know exactly how far apart two ages are. So to put some terms behind this, here are the four types of scales. Categorical would be things like shoe type, or things like color type, or type of food that you've ordered. Uh, there's no real order to things, they're just different categories. Now ordinal adds more information. Now you start knowing an order between things. In our last case, place of finish. First finishes before second. We know that, but we don't know how much before second they finish. If we start knowing how much before two people, how much time there is between two finishers, that becomes an interval or a ratio variable. Now, in terms of statistics, we really don't care about the difference between interval and ratio all that much. What we really care about is the interval property, that we know the relative difference between and distance between two individual data points. The difference is, however, that a ratio variable has a true zero. So when you have a true zero, you can say things like 30 minutes is twice as long as 15 minutes. When you don't have a true zero, which would be an interval variable that's not ratio, for instance, you couldn't say something like 40 degrees Fahrenheit is twice as hot as 20 degrees Fahrenheit, because that's not working on a true zero scale. Back to the property that matters, we know the interval between any two individuals, the distance between them. 
ordinal, all we know is the order, not the relative distance, and categorical, all we know are the categories. Well, let's go back to our data for the 5K race. Which type of scale is each column of data? So starting with something like time, this is something where we know relative difference between different runners, right? And we also, um, there is a true zero, zero minutes. So this is a ratio variable. When we look at things like place or really place and age group, we know the relative difference between, uh, we don't know the relative difference between any two finishers. We, all we know is the order they finished. So that's an ordinal variable. So we know that first is before second, but we don't know how much time first is before second if all we know is their place. And that's the same for place and age group. Now come back to age. Age is a ratio variable. There's a true zero on it, um, and we're able to tell how much older or younger someone is than someone else. When we start bending things, um, there could be some debate about whether this is still a, a ratio property or not, but it's really starting to take properties of an ordinal variable. We really know the relative um, position in terms of order, but we don't know the difference in position between younger and older age group. Uh, so uh, that's more of an ordinal type property for when you start bending things. Gender and shoe, we've already kind of covered this. These are categories. There's no ordering of better to worse or smaller to bigger or anything like that. So it's just a category. So let's come back to this. Why does scale type matter? Well, your type of statistical model you're going to use depends on the scale type of your independent variable and the scale type of your dependent variable. If you're going to run hypothesis tests, your independent variable is likely ordinal or categorical. If you have an interval or ratio independent variable, you're likely looking at other modeling techniques such as regression. For a dependent variable, let's say you do have an ordinal or categorical independent variable, you're going to be running hypothesis tests. If your dependent variable is an interval or ratio, well, you're likely going to be able to run t-test or ANOVA, or at least you have the chance of being able to run those. Um, if your dependent variable is only ordinal, not interval or ratio, then a non-parametric test might be what you need to use. And if it's a categorical variable, tests such as a chi-square test or a test of proportion could be an appropriate type test. Bottom line on this is knowing the scale type drives what type of statistical model you're going to be able to create with your data. So let me give you one more example. Uh, this is a problem dealing with carbonated drinks. And we want to know, do carbonated drinks have a longer average shelf life uh, compared to non-carbonated drinks? We have this data, including whether the drinks are carbonated or not. Imagine we have far more samples than just three. The kind of material <laughs> that, that the bottle is made out of or the container is made of, not that important for this question. Then the shelf life in days, shelf life in years, shelf life um, in whether it's like medium or short or long shelf life. The question is, what type of scale is each variable in this table? We're going to come back to the answers of this at the very end of this presentation. I'm going to give you a minute to look at this, give you the big high points in review, and then we'll come back to the answer. So in review, there are four types of scales, ratio and interval, each have this property of knowing how far apart two data points are. Ordinal only has the property of knowing the order in which the data points lie. And then categorical, all you know are categories. Uh, why this is important is the statistical model that you make or can make depends in part on the types of scales of your independent and dependent variables. Now on with the answers for this question. What types of scales are each of these variables? Well, carbonation status is just yes, no. That's a categorical variable. The container material, just what type of container material it is, again, categorical. Now the shelf life in days, and shelf life in years for that matter, it's just a change in units is all. Both of these are ratio variables. There's a true zero to them. And you could say fairly that 200 days is twice as long as 100 days. You definitely know the relative number of days or years 
between any two data points. Now, if all you know is whether the shelf life is medium, short, or long, then you're down to just knowing ordinal data. You don't know as much as you did when you knew the number of days.